How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to be bringing you guys the new edition of the Elite 64 team selection. So it's been a little bit of a while since we have created this. The last time I gave you guys an update was I think around Game Week 8 or Game Week 7. So what better time to do it in an international break because as you guys know, this is obviously based on the Game Week 8 data. Now, if you guys are new to this channel or simply just new to this kind of series, what this series is all about is that the Elite 64 is FPL General's Invitational League. You guys can also win promotion from his uh, Community League as well as the Qualifier Leagues for the Elite 64. But all you guys have to know is that these 64 managers are some of the best in the world and thankfully I'm one of them. Don't necessarily consider myself to be one of the best, but I actually won qualification when I finished 22nd in the world. So what I've done is I have a Python script using the FPL API to kind of track this league. I'm going to be giving you guys the template team, the camp choices, the chip strategy. And then finally, I'm going to do my own prediction on the team selection and the transfer plan of these elite managers. So that sounds like something interesting to you guys. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So to start off the kind of a review of the Elite 64, I want to go over the chip strategy because we haven't kind of given you guys an update of what chips have been used in the past. The sub reason for that is that there hasn't really been a big game week or a blank game week where chips are going to be used. So thankfully, blank game week 8 came on the horizon at the perfect time and that was going to prove to be a major shift in the chip strategy. So in terms of the chips used in blank game week 8 by these elite managers, I can safely say that no triple captains or bench boosts were played, no frets were played, and the last two chips, they were either going to be a wild card or simply using no chip at all. So in terms of the wildcard, 54.7% of the Elite 64. So you guys can see basically half the Elite 64 ended up using the chip in blank game week 8. And therefore that's why I wanted to make this video even more because we're obviously going to have a massive change to the template with all those wildcards being played. So that then leaves 45.3% of managers using no chip. And what you guys will see in game week 9 and game week 12 will probably be those game weeks where these managers use that chip. So after those game weeks we can get another refresh of the template. Now obviously with the wildcard it's quite hard to kind of justify if it was going to pay off or not pay off. I think in general a wildcard you should always be in a green arrow after that game week. But it is a super situational chip so I can't really say if that was a good choice or a bad choice. But now let's go on to the actual template. I'll be going through kind of the left to right, the highest owned to the lowest owned options in terms of the top five or top three options depending on the positions. And because of those wildcards we have had some changes in the ownerships. So the first department to go over is going to be the goalkeepers. And as you guys can see, Danny Ward still highly owned. And the simple reason for that is that he is so cheap. So he comes in with an ownership of 47.2%. And the new kind of second goalkeeper or first goalkeeper, in my opinion, is going to be Nick Pope with 64.1%. So what was quite interesting for me to see is that the ownership of Ward has actually gone down. But what I kind of think happened here is that some managers actually needed some extra value for their kind of wildcard drafts to then put Iverson instead of Danny Ward as a second goalkeeper. Now, some managers might have actually gone for that double up in the Leicester goalkeepers. Danny Ward and Iverson could be a combination, but I definitely don't think in game week eight, I think the game week nine wildcard, we might see an emergence of that. So I think most wildcarders generally went with Nick Pope. Also, a couple of managers probably transferred him in, and that kind of explains that 64.1%. Now, in terms of other goalkeepers to take note of, there was going to be Sanchez and Ramsdale, but generally these two are quite high up, and then I think Iverson came in with about 37.2%. Then moving on to our back line, the first defender is going to be Trippier, who has a massive 100% of ownership. If you guys recall in the previous episodes, Trent didn't even have 100%, so Trippier is definitely one to keep your eyes on. And if you guys don't have coverage from his point of view, I'd suggest maybe getting him in. So I do think for game week 8, the Bournemouth at home game was a plum game. A little bit of a pity there that Newcastle didn't keep a clean sheet, as the fixtures upcoming look slightly tougher than I think most people are thinking. But still, 100% is massive, especially in the Elite 64. It's also very common that all the managers will own one specific player. Next up is going to be Cancelo, kind of a predictable one there. From a Man City point of view, I think you always want coverage from a defensive point of view. And that's why Cancelo's ownership is so high at 92.2%. And this has actually gone down since the last video I made. And I do think his ownership will kind of dip up until that game week 12 blank. Next up, Reese James with 78.1%, a popular option on the wild card. You're simply going to bench him for game week 8. As from game week 9 onwards, Chelsea have some very nice fixtures coming up. Another kind of more premium defender to go for is going to be Perisic with 31.3%. And that was a little bit of a surprise for me because I think the Elite 64 is sometimes more conservative. And with that rotation potentially for Perisic, I didn't think his ownership was going to be that high. But I guess on a wild card, maybe a one-week punt, that Leicester fixture was quite nice. And as with Trippier, a little bit of a pity that he didn't keep a clean shot in game week 8. Now the final defender to go for is going to be the interesting one here, the controversial one. It's going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold with a measly ownership of 21.9%. Now I say measly, the only reason for that is that he was kind of rivaling Trippier at that 100% mark. So to see him drop so drastically is a massive surprise. But the simple reason for that is we spoke about this when we were looking at our transfer plan for blank game week 8. Trent and Salah are going to be your high ownership players, your more expensive options, and therefore the most sensible ones to downgrade. And you can always bring them in for a cheaper price because Liverpool haven't been performing that well. 
But still, really interesting for me to see one of those massive changes from the last episode is going to be this Trent ownership, and he really looks like a nice differential going into Game Week 9. Now, I do think come Game Week 9, we will see his ownership improve, I think, on a wild card. A lot of people are going to go for a Salah and a Trent, and that's why that kind of 45% of managers in the Elite 64 that are wild carding, all of them might actually go for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now heading into Midfoot Apartment, we have yet another 100% owned option. It's going to be Martelli, and you guys can understand why. Cheap price point, so consistent, even though he didn't get an attacking return in Game Week 8, which is a nice fixture coming up for Arsenal after these next two. It's a simple hold for me. It's a little bit self-explanatory on that ownership, but what will be interesting for me to see is the wild carders for Game Week 9, if they do include Martelli or not. Now next up, we spoke about kind of Trent's ownership, Salah's ownership also has dipped. A little bit of a spoiler alert there, but his current ownership is around 9% in the Elite 64. So if you need a Salah replacement, the most obvious one is going to be KDB, and he comes in with an ownership of 54.7%. It's so not exactly the mark that kind of went for Salah and downgraded him. I think a few other options were kind of brought in as replacements for Salah, but definitely the majority of managers went for Kevin De Bruyne. The reason for that is quite a few things. The first one, Man City were playing good football. We have some nice pictures coming up for them at home. And then lastly, he's almost a placeholder when you do want to bring in the Egyptian. I know personally that was kind of my thinking process behind Kevin De Bruyne, and that's why over the next two, Salah versus De Bruyne is going to be an interesting debate. The next midfielder to go for, another self-explanatory one, lovely fixtures coming up, scored against Spurs in game week 8, has Odium Forest at home, Bournemouth away in the next two, it's me James Madison. Now his ownership comes in just below that 47% mark, I think it's only going to grow come game week 9, as wild carders and free transfers will probably be put on him. So if you guys don't have some midfield coverage or some Leicester attacking coverage, I would suggest Madison, price point is pretty strong and definitely one of those main talisman for them. Now the next option was a little bit surprise for me, but I can understand it maybe because of his cheap price point. It's going to be Leon Bailey from Aston Villa. So Aston Villa side that aren't playing some great football, Leon Bailey might be a rotation concern depending what formation kind of Stevie G wants to go for. But with a cool ownership of 28.1%, I think the Elite 64 were quite kind to it. But what I can only assume here is that if you didn't go for someone like an Andres Pereira, you had some value in your bank, you went for Leon Bailey as a fifth midfielder, as he might be slightly better than those 4.5 options. But Villa do have some nice fixtures coming up, so if you want to go for a punt, maybe consider him, but please remember that he is a rotation risk. Now the final option might not be a rotation risk, but definitely from the stats point of view, definitely from how his team is playing, they aren't playing that great at the moment, it's going to be Jared Bowen from West Ham. So 21.9% of managers and the majority of those will probably be wild carders, however, some free transfers might have been spent on maybe a solid to Bowen downgrade, as a little bit of a one-week punt for game week 8. So Jared Bowen, he might not have the most sense in terms of goals and assists to bring him in, but definitely some nice fixtures of West Ham upcoming could lead you to bring him in. So you guys can see in terms of the kind of midfield five, pretty templated here, even though we have had some wild carders, the ownerships are around 50%, but still, I've seen a lot of these players or these midfielders in a lot of people's drafts or teams going to game week eight. Now the big talking point yet again, like Trent, but I haven't included him here because his ownership is so low, is going to be Mo Salah, and if you guys are on a wild card, I'd probably suggest going for him. I included him on my first wild card draft that I released a couple of days ago. So I think in the Elite 64 and in the overall ranks, Mo Salah might be a massive differential to get. But as I mentioned, KDB vs Salah over the next two fixtures is going to be mighty interesting. Now the final department to go over is going to start off with yet another 100 percenter. You guys probably have predicted it. It's Erling Haaland from Man City. 100% understandable, so consistent, and almost a perma-captain for most managers. So 100% is perfectly understandable, and let's move on to the next one, which is going to be Mitrovic, and he's a surprise to me because I think most managers were expecting big things from him, and unfortunately in blank game week 8, well, he ended up blanking. But just under 72% ownership is massive in the Elite 64, and it just shows you that the thinking behind him was the stats look good, the fixtures look good, and he's a main talisman for Fulham. Well, not quite the main talisman he thought, as he didn't end up scoring even though Fulham scored 3, but I do think with the nice fixtures coming up, he should repay the faith. And the last forward to go over is going to be Gabriel Jesus from Arsenal. This is perfectly understandable. Most of us owned him going into kind of game week seven. But come the game week eight wildcard, probably took him out. And that's why you guys have seen his ownership kind of half. Now going into game week nine, I think those wildcarders will also drop the Arsenal striker. And even though he scored in game week eight, I don't think many will carry him to game week nine. Now there were some other forwards to go over here. And Isaac looked like a popular option I ever I think only on a wildcard is kind of dropped. You would include Isaac. As I think on free chances, Mitrovic was the more attractive option. But definitely in terms of the front three, I think we're going to see a more of a template emerging. I think Gabriel Jesus will drop out. We will see a new addition in there, whether it be an Ivan Tony, and Isaac, even though he currently is going to be injured. Or maybe even a Solanke as an out there budget punt. But you guys can just pause the video right now if you want to kind of look a little bit more in depth at these options, their ownerships, because now we're going to focus on the team selection and then finally the transfer plan. Now before we talk about the team selection and the transfer plan or the predicted transfer plan, I just want to quickly touch on captaincy because I want to show you guys the mindsets of these managers in terms of Haaland and other options. 
So talking about Erling Haaland, in terms of blank game week 8, he was captain by 87.5% of the lead 64, which is a very high number. The second highest was going to be Harry Kane, they came in with 10.9%, and I'm pretty sure those managers will be quite happy, as he did outperform the Norwegian. But what I wanted to show you here is the kind of dominance of Erling Haaland. And if you guys don't have him on captaining him, please be careful of his effective ownership because just like the Elite 64, this is a representation of the overall ranks or whatever rank system that you guys want to go for. So definitely not captaining Erling Haaland every single game week is going to be a punt. Now to me, that sounds like an opportunity to kind of rise up the ranks. If you think another option could outperform Haaland going to game week 9, 10 onwards, I might be tempted to go for that if you really do back the opponent. But I do think the majority of us will probably captain Haaland every single game week, so I just wanted to show you here that that's the current thinking of the Elite 64. But now going on to the team selection for the upcoming game week 9, and the first thing I want to bring your attention to is bottom right hand side, negative 0.8, so yes, I couldn't actually afford this draft, but I don't want to make a significant downgrade because the other downgrade I could do is maybe take out a Bowen for a Bailey, but then I have like 3 million in the bank, so I'd rather go for the small negative and just tell you guys that I couldn't actually afford this draft, so please keep that in mind. So starting off with the bench, these are going to be the options that are super highly owned, but unfortunately I don't want to cover them in my kind of template because they are budget options and therefore not that important. So we spoke about Danny Ward, nice fixture against Nottingham Forest with then of Andreas Pereira, who I think is currently the third highest owned or second highest owned midfield at the current moment with Newcastle at home. We then have Neko Williams and uh, Patterson from Everton, both kind of cheap budget defenders to go for. Unfortunately, Patterson was actually injured in last night's Scottish game, so be just make sure that he's going to be fine for game week 9. So the bench kind of picks itself. These are the options that probably everyone owns and therefore will bench for game week 9. But now going on to our starting 11, and the first option, Nick Pope, is going to be in goal, but there is some conversation about who potentially to go for. If you guys own a Mitrovic and Andreas Pereira, they're going to be in your starting 11. You probably hope that they score, and therefore you hope that Nick Pope blanks. So to me, that Fulham away game is going to be a pretty tough one for Newcastle. And therefore, Danny Ward, yes, the Leicester defense doesn't look as strong as it used to. But Nottingham Forest at home is a great fixture. But we'll stick with the conservative one because the managers in the Elite 64 are usually quite conservative. And we'll go for Nick Pope and hope that he gets a clean sheet. When we go into our defensive department, you can understand why you want the clean sheet even more. We've got Kieran Trippier with the exact same fixture. So therefore, double up against that Fulham team. We then have Cancelo at home against United and then James against Crystal Palace away. Tough games actually on paper there. I can see both teams kind of scoring against these respective teams, but I can also see a clean sheet and maybe an attacking return on the cards. But luckily, you guys can see the Elite 64 or the template of the Elite 64 has that fullback three, and you guys know how I love a fullback in FPL. Moving on to midfoot apartment, relatively good fixtures here. Kevin De Bruyne against United. He likes to do well in those Manchester derbies. We obviously have Madison against Nottingham Forest at home. Great fixture on paper. Martelly against Spurs. North London derbies usually have goals in them. And then Jared Bowen against Wolves at home. Luckily, it is a home game because Wolves are quite good defensively. So generally, the midfoot apartment, no complaints here. Yes, I might have actually wanted Mo Salah here, but we'll talk about that in the transfer plan. Then finally going to our forward department, Harden against United at home. I mean, he's scoring against everyone, so why not United? Mitrovic against Newcastle, where if you guys do own Pope and Trippier, you might be in a little bit of a contradiction there. You might actually hope that the clean sheet is kept for Newcastle, and therefore Mitrovic blanks. Then finally, Jesus against Spurs. As mentioned, Martelli, usually a lot of goals in these North London derbies, and both sides are on good attacking form, so no reason that Martelli and Jesus can't get an attacking return. Then finally, in terms of captaincy, it's going to be on Erling Haaland for this game week. Spoke about the Elite 64. They usually are quite conservative, and therefore the majority captain will definitely be on the Norwegian. So just kind of taking the team selection with no transfers into account, the current template is going to be what you guys see on screen. Pause it if you want to look at it, but now let's talk about the transfer plan. So in terms of the transfer plan, going into the upcoming game week 9, as you guys saw earlier on, 45% haven't used the wildcard, and therefore I actually think that the wildcard is going to be played for the majority of managers. So I do think the two transfer plans is either using the wildcard for game week 9 or 2 if you did wildcard in game week 8 like 54% I think of the lead 64 did those managers will probably bank a transfer unless there's an injury concern to someone like an Isaac. So I mentioned this early on that Isaac is currently injured, returned from the Sweden camp, so he could be a popular option out. But I also do think for those wildcarders in Game Week 8, if they left enough money in the bank to upgrade Kevin De Bruyne to Salah, they might actually do that move for Game Week 9. In terms of other transfers, I think a Madison in will be a popular transfer for those lovely Leicester fixtures coming up, but I think that's probably as far as I would go in terms of those moves. Now the option could be a Jesus out for someone like an Ivan Tony, or even down to a Solanke if these managers need more money. So kind of wrap up the transfer plan, the three scenarios, the first one is going to be if they haven't wildcarded yet, they're probably going to wildcard. The second one is if they wildcarded in game week 8, probably going to bank a transfer or use one free transfer for Kevin De Bruyne to Mo Salah. And the third option is that a free transfer could always be played, I think a Madison's a popular transfer in, or a Jesus, someone like a Solanke for money, and then upgrade another department. But let me know what you guys think about the kind of template of the Elite 64, how many options do you guys own of the template, and what do you think about the transfer plan going to game week 9? 
But this is basically wrap up the video, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new subscribed yet. We'll be seeing you guys for tons of content next week after this international break is done. So make sure those bell notifications are on and you guys are following me over on Twitter. But I'm signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.